Friends, welcome. Uh, I want to share with you a series of, of videos uh, with the topic of what is your PayPal all, uh, all about? So the first one is going to be this uh, paper we recently submitted to Earth System Dynamics, a very interesting journal with open, open access journal and open discussion uh, preview process. And this paper is based on a very basic idea that what we have been um, thinking about uh, the safe operating space for humanity is not well characterized only by the values of the so-called planetary boundaries, these uh, biogeochemical uh, processes uh, that show some kind of uh, threshold dynamics uh, and beyond that uh, threshold we suspect that uh, a change of these processes would occur that most certainly uh, would pose uh, a, a catastrophic uh, risk to, to humanity as we know it. No? Uh, so and here we, we propose the idea that um, this uh, safe, safe space is not well characterized only by, by, by the values of the planetary boundaries because uh, that's not taking into account the interactions. So, for example, uh, if you set a, a threshold for, for, all, uh, for climate change but do not take into account uh, ocean acidification, then by ocean-owned processes uh, that uh, start occurring in a, in a more narrow values of, C, of CO2 in the atmosphere that eventually goes down with the rain to the ocean, uh, uh, that could liberate CO, uh, more CO2 to the atmosphere, uh, you are not um, uh, seeing the, the compound effect of ocean acid, uh, acidification uh, with, um, feedbacking to climate change. So we need to start uh, thinking about the interactions. That's one point. The other point is that uh, the stacked value of these uh, thresholds is very difficult to, to estimate. And it's also very difficult to know uh, how near or, or, or far we are of this threshold. Uh, for example, it's very difficult to know the threshold for biodiversity loss. No? Uh, how many species are we willing to lose before, uh, before we uh, enter into a, a mass extinction? Are we already into, in, in, a, in the sixth uh, mass extinction? Uh, and so on. So in this paper with my colleague Melanie Kolb, uh, we uh, start to think about another, an, another perspective, a complex system perspective. Uh, we think that uh, the correct focus for this is not uh, planetary boundaries, but uh, a most fundamental property of uh, evolutionary systems Including, including Earth uh, system uh, because of all uh, biosphere uh, dynamics that, uh, that are included in it. And this, and this property, this basic property of all living things is how they respond to perturbations, how living things respond to volatility to time. And it is very easy to to convince you that any system, any living system, or any living system, but any system under an evolutionary process, um, if you, if these systems uh, has even the smallest advantage uh, uh, versus uh, the competitors uh, in, in as a function of volatility or perturbations or time even the smallest advantage will eventually uh, propagate and, and uh, 
and grow with with uh, with generations and these systems will uh, will win the evolutionary process and will dominate so uh, this uh, property of gain or uh, uh, gain in front of adversity uh, maestro taleb uh, uh, named as antifragility uh, in a more rigorous mathematic uh, definitions, uh, antifragility is a nonlinear response to perturbations, a local nonlinear response to perturbation in a, in a convex way. Uh, and it is very interesting because whenever a system is in its maximum of antifragility, uh, uh, Pablo Padilla and I. Uh, we have uh, uh, hypothesis that also the system is in a maximum of complexity uh, using ideas by Carlos Gershenson about how antifragility may be, may, may be uh, uh, measured uh, using uh, complexity as the payoff, as the payoff function uh, uh, against the uh, against one one to uh, to assess if the system gains or, or loses. So um, in general, uh, a system uh, may be anti fragile to to price, for example, or to income, for example, and and you you should you you have to 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 identify the correct payoff function. Uh, in order to understand uh, the system is antifragile to what, no? to what type of, of, of stressors. But maybe, and that's the, the original idea of, of Carlos, is that maybe a very universal payoff is complexity. No? Um, so when a system is antifragile, it's also in a maximum of a complexity. And with Pablo, we have posed that they are also in a maximum of Fisher information, and even more, the system is in criticality. And criticality is a dynamic uh, regimen uh, in which the system uh, exhibits a, a, a scale invariance in the frequency space, and is also in a good balance between information emergence and information self-organization uh, uh, that, that may be, may, may, that may, may be translated as a, a balance between randomness and order, between uh, adaptation and robustness. So, uh, what we are saying here is that antifragility is the core characteristic of living systems and is the core characteristic or property of Earth systems, uh, of Earth systems uh, dynamics. And as I already said, uh, this could be assessed uh, using Fisher information. So uh, the, the problem is uh, Fisher information of what? No? It could be complexity, but complexity is also this uh, kind of tricky to, to, to measure. But then we turn to, to thermodynamics. No? Uh, thermodynamics is maybe the, the most basic and universal uh, theory in physics. Uh, and using the results and ideas of Karo Mikaelian, uh, we identify or we choose as a, a payoff function for Earth system dynamics uh, the uh, entropy production. Uh, and entropy production may be uh, approximated by, by albedo. This has been recognized also by Karo Mikaelian and before him, maybe by. Uh, Ulanovich and others. Uh, and and al albedo is a, a very easy to uh, a very easy to to measure a, a variable using remote sensing. Uh, so we took a, a time series for almost three years of of a, a short wave albedo anomalies for the northern hemisphere. Uh, for the July month, and we took this time series, we calculate 
the feature information that uh, as Cabezas and Coworker has shown is a proxy also for stability. It's easy to, to see uh, why it is like that because efficient information may be uh, defined uh, as, as a function of, uh, fluctu uh, of the system's fluctuations, uh, first and second derivatives that uh, we could uh, uh, understand as uh, tangential velocity and acceleration in the phase space. So a system that is moving in the phase space, in the space of the important variables, um, if, 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 if the system is moving uh, very slowly and uh, without uh, much acceleration, then it is confined into a very small uh, hyper volume in the, in the phase space. And so uh, with, uh, with very um, few measurements, we may access to a very good inference that's high feature information and it's also straightforward to see that if the hypervolume uh, in which the, the system is, uh, is const uh, constrained in the phase space is very, is, uh, is very small, then the system is uh, stable because um, it, the system is not exploring a lot of, of values of the phase space but uh, maintain, maintaining itself uh, very near to, to a set point. No? Uh, so uh, feature information is also a proxy of stability. We used the algorithm uh, developed by Cabezas and collaborators, implemented in Python and, uh, of, and open access. And what we found is that from the, from the initial year to the final year, we have a net loss of uh, feature information for time, uh, albedo time series, and that translates into a uh, loss in antifragility. And what we are saying is that uh, <clears throat> because of human perturbation to the to Earth system, uh, the planet is losing its capacity to respond to this kind of perturbations. And, and this is important because this means that we have a, a compounding problem because human perturbation such as climate change is increasing uh, but at the same time, the planet is losing its capacity to respond to it. Uh, in that sense, uh, we need to not only uh, reduce or capture CO2 emissions, but we also uh, need to restore Earth's antifragility, which means to restore its ecosystems. And that's what this paper talks about. Thank you and see you on next paper.